Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Getting ready for the weekend. We've got weekend plans, so we've got some rain on the way. People worried about that. And we have a solar eclipse, so people want to see some sunshine so we can actually see that partial solar eclipse. So let's get into the forecast because there's a lot going on this weekend and the rain and clouds are on the way. Let's get right to what's happening. This is the wide view. You could see this morning we had fog. It was cool temperatures in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. But here comes our storm system. Look off towards the west. You can clearly see it. This is going to be the front that's heading our way. But what's interesting is moisture beginning to get pulled up from the south. There's a weak area of low pressure over northern Florida that's still kind of sitting there. So some of that uh, influence is going to be traveling north. Now, during the day today, I mean, today is going to be a gorgeous day. I mean, honestly, lots of sunshine. Temperatures could get close to 80 degrees because of all the sunshine. But then the clouds will really start to thicken up later this evening. So today, no worries at all. It's all going to be about this front as it pushes our way. So let's get right to the future cast. All right, so we'll get right to the future cast here. We'll go through time. I'm going to go through a couple frames here. We'll get into about 4 o'clock this afternoon. A couple things you notice right off the bat. Not much rain in our area, but South Carolina heads up. You're going to see some rain. By 6 o'clock, I do expect clouds will start to move into the region. So those high school football games, if you're south, I would bring the umbrella and poncho just in case because some of these scattered showers might get up here in time for the first uh, couple of games of the night. But as we get later, after 10 o'clock, that's when we start to see the scattered showers develop. And again, they'll be really scattered. I think that's the thing to emphasize, not widespread, but scattered. We get into the overnight hours. We'll get into about 2 o'clock in the morning. Actually, that low pressure system to the south is actually helping to kick off more showers across our area. And in fact, that low pressure might end up being the biggest driver of the shower activity overnight. This is three o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning. This is four, five, six, right around 7 a.m. You wake up Saturday morning, you're like, holy cow, it's raining everywhere. Great news. We need the, the rain. I know it's the weekend. I know there's a solar eclipse, but when e beggars can't be choosers, we need this moisture. So we'll take it, but let's get it out of here quick enough, right? So we can get things done. So this is 7 a.m. We go to 8, 9 a.m. Starts to push east. Boy, that looks like a pretty good little slug of moisture by about 11 a.m. So this is the good news. The rain starts to move out by the middle of the day and drier air will be filtering. But the front itself is right here. But if we can get the winds to switch around, remember, low pressure spins counterclockwise. So the fact that the winds shift like this actually is a drying flow. So even though the front is still here, this should allow for downsloping. And what I mean by that is winds coming out of the mountains, the air sinks, it compresses, it heats, and it dries things out. So that should allow for some clearing. By about one o'clock, we're still on the back edge, which is a little worrisome, worrisome because that would mean clouds are lingering. And again, the peak of the eclipse is right around 116. But could we see it maybe later, 2 o'clock, the moisture is still there. We get into the afternoon, 3 o'clock, it starts to push east. So the afternoon shows rapid improvement. It's all going to be about timing and the speed of the system. Now the front tries to move through later in the evening. If we get some sunshine, it might, might allow for one or two isolated little showers to pop up as it pushes through. So don't be surprised if even in the evening there's at least a 20-30% chance of a stray shower with the front. And then it pushes through. And what you're seeing back here is northwest flow. That's cold air. Um, that's some really cold air moving into the mountains and everywhere else. And that's what drives some of the rain up there. So let's talk about the eclipse. When is it going to happen? So it partial eclipse starts at 11.50 a.m. Probably not great news for a lot of us because that is not looking like it's going to be visible. Peak eclipse is going to be right here. And I'll show you the timing. This is really one. I mean, let me turn this off real quickly. I zoomed in on it for you. Let me show you the peak eclipse. So we'll get right to the peak eclipse. So peak eclipse is going to happen right there, 1.16 in the afternoon. That's what we're going to see it. But it will happen, and we'll see this part of the, the sun get obscured by the moon's shadow as it pushes over the area. So that's what we're going to see right about here. So this is a 1.16 in the afternoon. So we want it to be somewhat clear right around this time. Does it have to be clear the whole time? No, but we just need a break, right, to see the sun. So the end of the eclipse is going to happen around 245. So that's why we have a we have a window there where if we can get some some sunshine or some breaks, at least just to get a glimpse of it. And remember, you're going to need your eclipse glasses. So make sure you got these ready to go or a filter. You know, you're going to want to put these bad boys on and look at up there and hopefully just get a glimpse of it and then maybe it goes back behind a cloud. So let's look at that cloud cover. So obviously cloud cover is going to be a big deal. We see the clouds moving in 
tonight. We'll go into tomorrow. Let's get right to the, let's cut right to the chase. We'll get to tomorrow. This is around 11 a.m., okay? If you, if you remember, the peak of this is 116, but the partial starts about 1150. So this is around 11 a.m. Let's go to noon. Oh, all oh, the back edge of the clouds is getting close. One o'clock, peak eclipse, 116. So there is some optimism. I don't want to be all doom and gloom. I think here, oh, not looking good. But from 77 west, man, there could be a chance that there'll be enough breaks. Let's go to two o'clock. So it's not great. I mean, there's some breaks showing up. It still looks partly the mostly cloudy. Three o'clock, some breaks. So there's some, at least some indications, maybe there'll be some breaks in the clouds. I don't think it's going to be mostly clear, but it doesn't really clear out until the evening hours. And then you see the front moving through. So I wish I had better news for you <laughs> for the eclipse. Uh, we're going to stream it regardless. So if you can't see it in your location, we'll show you a stream from our sister stations out west. Um, and remember, this is this is a partial eclipse for us. It's an annular eclipse. There's a total eclipse that'll be across the middle of the country next April. That's a much bigger deal. So that's one we need to look forward to in April. So don't 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 be bad uh, sad that you missed this or you couldn't see it in person because we get a great opportunity coming up next year. Have a great weekend. I'll post updates on the timing of the rain, but just plan for it Saturday morning with improvement after lunchtime.